Hey, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to class. Good evening. Welcome to class. <laughs> All right. So my name is Eunice. I'll be your um, friend, auntie, instructor for the next two weeks and beyond. Our class is four days, but the process of you actually making it to test date could take three weeks to four weeks, depending on how soon you submit your application for testing. So we're going to talk about just a general overview of the testing process. So this first hour of class is more like your orientation and introduction. It's the boring part of class. But if we don't get past this, you're gonna be asking questions later that we should have addressed before we even started. So welcome, we also wanna talk about safety. We have the one way in, one way out. Our restrooms are all the way down the hall. And in about an hour, when we get through with our orientation, we all have to learn a hand washing skill. So we'll all go to the restroom. It has multiple sinks and we'll be doing hand washing. So that'll be a good time for you to go to the ladies room then. Um, we have our clinical room in the back, which you'll be sh seeing shortly. And a lot of you have already gone into our nourishment room. So if you get hungry, you don't have to ask permission, you get up. We only have the one trash can in the kitchen. Make sure all your trash goes into that. And you're welcome to bring food for the other days that you're coming to class. If you don't want oodles or noodles, we do have crackers. They have peanut butter. So if you're allergic to peanut butter, when the camera goes off, please let us know where your EpiPen is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've been a nurse now for 25 years. What I'm teaching you is not real world standards. What I'm teaching you is what you need to know in order to pass the Florida CNA examination. So I'm teaching you perfect care for one person who happens to be an adult. Once you actually pass your exam, you can work in the jails, you can work with kids, you can work with infants, you can work in a lot of different environments once you become a CNA. So I'm just teaching you exactly what you need to know to pass your test. And then once you pass your test, it's called on the job training. That's when you're gonna learn time management. I can't teach you time management here because your test only allows you to do one skill at a time. But in the real world, you can have 15 patients. And two are calling you simultaneously and you got to figure out who's the priority and how to appease the other until you can get into the room. So that's a little bit about myself. Um, fun fact, I pretty much live here. Um, <laughs> I'm always teaching. I enjoy what I do. And um, I hope to encourage other people to be educators, because when people think about becoming nurses, they don't think about becoming nurse educators. But if we don't have good educators, that means we won't have future nurses. So I know the tribal nurses make all the money, but somebody had to train them. OK, me. All right. So anyway, <laughs> as you go around and introduce yourself, um, I may step out just to make it a little bit cooler. I'll change the um, temperature in the room. But when you introduce yourself, tell us your first name the reason you're taking the course and a fun fact. Like I don't really have fun right now because I'm busy working a lot, but I do have a trip planned to Vegas by myself. And I heard there's like a laundromat that you can go in and it's like a restaurant, it's like a hidden restaurant. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So I'm looking forward to going to the stay laundromat. On stay off of TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, if I can have you in the corner, please say your first name, um, a fun fact, and the reason you're taking the course. Um, tell us the reason you're taking the course. I've been a caregiver for 11 years. I've been professionally. Proud of you. All right. And a fun fact, if you had time resources, what would you do for fun if you don't have fun currently? <laughs> oh, well, congratulations. Yeah, so a lot of priorities, yeah. Yeah, I already told you, okay, I have a trip planned to Atlanta for two weekends to go visit my sister, the cousin of Diana. Okay, well, I hope you have an enjoyable trip. All right, so welcome to class. Next, please. Hi, yes, my name is Tanisha Kendall. What brings me here is I am refreshing my skills. I've been doing a mental health, behavioral health, clinical dependency with all ages. That's wonderful. And um, I've been doing it for 24 years, but it was more of a, a, a mental health entity of it and behavioral health. Mm -hmm. So I already had took the class years ago, but I needed to refresh myself as far as the medical setting as well as being an MA. And um, my fun fact is I have a 20 year old and a five year old. And you look so young. Oh my yeah, gosh, wow. you look so young. Well, welcome to class, welcome to class. Are you ready to introduce yourself? All right, good evening. Um, Ms. Paula, um, the reason why I'm taking the class is I want to be better. Um, and a fun fact, 
fear. Then you know what? Someone else already came in and said they were nervous. Mm -hmm. So whatever your fear is, we're going to um, hopefully reduce your fears as you are learning skills and not pretend to be an old lady. Okay. <laughs> If you can perform the skills on me, if you can perform skills on your other classmates, um, that should help take some of the nervousness away because in a few months, it's going to be a real patient who's in a room with her family members and we have to build your confidence. All right. So welcome to class. Next. Hi, my name is Shanice Williams. Um, I'm taking this course because I want a career change. I'm a classically chef. I'm a classically trained chef. Um, Ooh. I have two small kids that one in five months currently pregnant again so I wanted to have a job that is more conducive to work and family life the balance between the two um, one thing with a chef is very long hours you yes really in the restaurant and it's just not conducive for family. very um, proud of you I do have like family members that have down syndrome and autism so that's kind of where I'm gravitating towards okay so, so whenever um, you pass your test, actually even before you pass your test, if that's something you're looking into doing, um, there are sitter positions. So you won't have to work as hard, but I'm not going to ask you to sit with somebody who's autistic while you're pregnant yeah. <laughs> because because they can be valid. They can have valid tendencies. But if you can just find, you know, a nice rich couple out in Ponte yeah. Vedra. Yeah, you know, that's the goal. Yes. That's yes. The goal. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for right now, just, you know, let's get through the class. Yeah. Let's get your CPR. Let's get CPR certified. And then I can put you with those connections because you can work as a sitter or a companion without being a CNA. Mm -hmm. But you having these extra skills are going to make you more comfortable with being a primary caregiver in someone's home. Mm -hmm. And you get to pick your hours. Yes. Okay. And then your your kids get new grandparents. Right. Okay. Right. Nothing wrong with the old grandparents. <laughs> All right. Please introduce, <laughs> please introduce yourself. My name is Rayanna. Um, I'm basically doing the course to further my education. I'm an MA from a million years ago, but <laughs> not certified by the state right now. But yes, it takes forever to go. So, um, are you transitioning into nursing? Um, I would like to eventually, but I have a lot of hangups. I have literally a half a dozen kids. Okay. Literally from 21 to 14. Yeah. I have one grandbaby, another one on the way, due in yes. July. So, that's my fun fact. Is that's we are currently planning a baby shower with a very stubborn 21-year-old. Oh, wow. You have such, that's so busy. The yes. grandkids, the kids. I have a 17-year-old who has autism. So, so yes. when she, you said the violent, oh, we've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. <laughs> I've had teeth marks on my arm for months at a time. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a lot of work. It's fun. It's a circus. It's chaotic, but it's your circus. It, it is. Yeah, and she <laughs> looks happy. And she's I mean, like, yeah, you yeah, look I mean, traded for the world. Yeah. It's life. We went to the doctor today, came home with a whole thermometer. I'm sitting here wondering if the leaves are still on or not. I'm going to let the husband deal with that, not me. <laughs> so a lot. So um, whenever you're ready to, you know, transition to whatever, I don't know if you want to go in facility, if you want to do, you know, home care. But um, hopefully we don't do job, ref we don't do job placement. And the reason why we don't do job placements is because I work my hardest to build these community partnerships and you all will go and sure. not show up or get fired within one month. I currently work 13 hour nights, so I'm hoping I can expand and cut those into you know more yes. flexible hours for me with him. Yeah, that'll be wonderful. So yeah. thank you. Last but not least. Um, my name is Jenna. Uh, fun fact about me, I'm a cat that I rescued out of the dumpster. Oh. And it's been my life ever since. Mm -hmm. um, I am, I've been a PCA for four years. I'm just on I'm waiting to further this, the next yeah. step. I can see you now. If I was working in the hospital, she's like so bubbly and yes. cheery. It doesn't matter what's going on. Patients crashing. She's like, hey, Nurse Eunice, what do you need? Uh <laughs> so wonderful. So once you get this license, doors are open. A lot of you all have past experience, even if it's personal care experience. Whenever um, you create your resumes, make sure you include that because it still counts, especially if you're dealing with autism, especially if you're dealing with mental health, um, because we actually have hospitals that or wings within the hospital that just specialize in strictly mental health. All right. So everybody, welcome to class. Let's go ahead and open up our books. And are you finished with your application? If so, I'll take it. Thank you.
All right, so page two of your books, we'll probably never go back to page two again, but I wanted you to see um, what's there. Page two is the table of contents. So when you're studying at home, if you can't find something, go back to the table of contents. I created this book. I'm not the best author in the world, but um, there is a little guide in the front. Please turn to page four. Is there anyone in here who did not watch the orientation videos? Okay, and so um, there are going to be some things that I may mention that I won't go into detail because the link was sent to you and I may tell you to go back and watch the videos because it covers some of the information that we... No problem, no problem, no problem. So, when, and don't forget when things don't load on your phone, because I teach a lot of different brands, including like American Heart. When something doesn't load on your phone, go use a different system, whether it's your laptop, tablet, if you have it available, because I promise you if I log on to one system with my Chromebook, it won't show, it won't play. If I log on it with an HP, it does play. So the systems don't play nice sometimes, all right? So attendance is a four-day class. I This is going to be the week that things start happening, unfortunately. Pray about it. Distractions, the cat's not your cat. Someone else's cat is going to run away, all right? So the animals are going to start acting crazy. I need for you to still make it to class. Um, four days, you can do anything for four days. So try to attend all days because we only offer the evening cl classes once per month and we only offer the weekend classes once per month. And my son's like, mommy, why are you working on the weekend? I'm like, because no one else wants to come teach. So I, 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 I can't teach, you know, four weeks. I, I just have to have some time to do other things. So we do the weekends and also the week, the evening courses for CNAs. Um, cell phones for all adults, please keep, keep your phone on vibrate or on silent. If you need to answer your phone, please go outside to do so. Otherwise, we're going to listen to your message and then, you know, repeat your conversation back to you. Smoking, this is a smoke-free facility. Go ahead and prepare for working in a regular facility because most of them are smoke-free also. Physical and mental disabilities, we rarely have that issue because on our website, it tells you that it's an accelerated course. I usually perform the skill first. We talk about it. You perform the skill. And by the time you see five people perform the skill, you should be proficient with it. Plus, you have the book to read and you have our video resources on YouTube. So there's no reason for you to fail this test. Completing the course successfully. Last paragraph on page four. As with almost everything, your success... Your success greatly depends upon your motivation and effort. Students who are on time, which you all were, pay attention, ask questions, and participate as expected should do well. We sincerely hope you enjoy this course and gain valuable information for your future. On page five, it talks about our Google resource page. I am probably four days away from completing our new online course. So once I complete the online course, I will send you the link so you can access the new resource page. All right, so this page is going to be going away as of March the 1st. So I only got a few more days. Okay, So you can access it now, but that's not what we're using in the future. Page six, I am your course instructor. My name is Eunice, but you all have my business cards on your table. So you don't necessarily have to write in your book right now. And whenever the camera stop rolling, I will give you my direct cell phone number. The reason I'm giving you my direct cell phone number is because we are accountable to each other. When you take... When you find out your test date, because I help you schedule your test date, we sh sh show you on the video how to schedule. I won't know your test date if you don't tell me. I won't know if you have questions before you take your test if you don't tell me. So we are accountable to each other because I'm usually teaching and my phone's on do not disturb. Text messages are preferred. We have multiple websites. We have Facebook. We have YouTube. We have our Google resource page, which is going to be changing and then we also have our Amazon store for um, uniform shoes and gifts. We talked about the job referrals. There's a sign outside this door for senior helpers. We have comfort keepers. We have a lot of community connections. Most of them are starting off paying $17 an hour. And all you need to have is your CPR certification, transportation, and have a wonderful personality. Be able to speak um, English as your primary language. And you can start taking care of people before you have your CNA license. Um, this will be non-skilled care. So you're not there giving baths. You're keeping them comfortable. You're doing laundry. Um, you're heating up meals. You're taking Miss Jenkins to the nail salon. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> On page seven, course orientation. To give you a better idea of what to expect and to assist you during your personal study time. 
The following is a course outline of the skills we will perform each day. This course will focus on demonstrating the proper technique of skills. Self-study and active participation are required in order for you to pass the state of Florida CNA examination. So over the next four days, we're going to cover every topic that's on page seven. Uh, we're probably only going to get through about four skills today. They'll be the really easy skill, hand washing, gloves, pulse respiration. We'll get through vital signs. But then the skills are going to progressively get harder. And then before the end of the week, um, by Thursday, we will have done every skill that would that will be a testable skill for the Florida Board of Nursing, the CNA examination. Any questions there? Page eight. Right, everyone should have a highlighter. I like to say pick up those handy dandy highlighters. I want you to highlight the word Prometric, highlight $155, and also highlight their website. Okay. Is there anyone who does not live in, in or near Jacksonville? Because sometimes we get... Well, I'm about an hour away. So where, what city? Satsuma. What is it near, the largest Putnam city? County. It's near Town Town County. Right. So our nearest testing sites for you are going to be Daytona or Jacksonville. Where do you want to take your test? Jacksonville. So, um, And then background screenings. Is there anyone in this room who has had a level two background screening within the last six months? Well, I have, I work for mental health and mm -hmm. being a student, so mm -hmm. you have to have all that. When was the last time they did um, it? I don't know, but. If you'll find out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the reason being is because when you're seeking, when you're trying to get a new license, most level twos are valid for five years. Mm -hmm. But if the Board of Nursing goes off of something you did five years ago, and then you have hurt somebody and they issue you a license, they're going to be liable. So they want a recent level two. And so if you, some of y'all have already scheduled your fingerprints here and we'll do them on Wednesday, but you have to have your driver's license, et cetera, just an ID that's um, unexpired. Um, if you are not that person and once you do your research, we can schedule a time for you to come back and do your fingerprints. If you don't have the money, it's $87.50. If you don't have the money to do it, I can still do your fingerprints, but not submit them until you actually pay for them. So that way they'll be in the system. Yes, ma'am. If you can find out before Thursday, okay. before, I'm sorry, before Wednesday's class. Okay. What's today, Monday? Yeah, before Wednesday's class. Okay. So Prometric charge is $155 for the CNA examination. And when we progress, when we go to our other pages, we'll talk about the layout of the testing site, the different skills. Um, but that includes the written and the clinical test. When it says written, it's multiple choice and on a computer. So you're not pulling out pen and paper. It's a multiple choice exam that's on a computer, but they still call it a written examination. As far as the day of your test, on the day of your test, so you have to actually have your background screening and you submit your application. Now it goes through the process to make sure that you don't have any criminal issues that the state is concerned about. Once they go back and they do their verifications, they are going to say you are clear to test. Prometric will let you know, hey, this is our next available test date. So you don't get to choose your test date. It is chosen for you, um, which means that your test could be in the middle of the week. <laughs> it can be, you know, and it's all day. You have to be at your test site on time. Your test starts at 9 a.m. So we tell our students to be at the test site at 830. We want you there before the test starts because you don't want to forfeit your fees. On the day that you take your test, when you pass, because our students pass their exams on the first attempt, when you pass, you get two letters. One letter is for your written test, a multiple choice examination that says pass. The second um, letter is for your clinical test, and this should say pass also. So you have two documents showing that you have passed the CNA examination. However, you won't have your physical license for about two weeks. That is the purpose of this long website. This is Florida Department of Health. Because in about three business days, if you just go to that website, you'll be able to pull up your license number. So you'll see your license number before you ever receive your physical license. Why is that important? You can update your resume. You can start interviewing. They just can't hire you until you have your physical paper license. But don't delay your hiring process. She's smiling. She already has a job lined up. <laughs> And then we mentioned basic life support slash CPR. 
we do offer those courses here. Um, if you are able to, we have a course on Thursday morning that starts at 930. I, um, I have a few more classes this month. Every now and then I have a weekend class. And if you really, really need it, I will schedule an evening class. Um, but um, if you're able to come on Thursday at 930, we can get your BLS and your CPR out of the way. How much is the... It's, I think it's $60 for your discount because you get a discounted CPR course. But for you, I think your homework assignment was to find your old card. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yep, and make sure that you actually have your physical card because whatever um, company you're applying for outside of the one that you're currently with, they're going to want to see the physical card. You're shaking your head. What's going on back I'm, there? I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is probably $500 when you get to pay for everything. $500. How much do you expect to make your first week during orientation? You're going to make it back in one week on the job. And then because you're a CNA during, I'm not going to say COVID season, I'm going to say during flu season because we don't know what's going on right now, but a lot of people are getting sick. Um, so you're going to be pretty busy. You're going to be busier than you really want it to be. It's going to die down a little bit um, in the spring, but then fall's going to come and then you're going to be busy again. So you're getting in at a good time. Um, what to do after you submit the application to Prometric. And we have a full video online. That's the orientation video that tells you how to fill out your Prometric application. You're going to check your business account in three business days to make sure the funds have been removed from your banking account. Your application will not be processed without a payment. And so for those of you all who are associated with an agency or an organization that is paying for your course and paying for your exam, we do that process for you. But the emails still come to you. We cannot be responsible for your emails. Why is that important? Because if you don't check your emails, you're going to miss your test dates and you have forfeited your fees. You're going to schedule your digital live scan fingerprints if you don't have a current one in the system. And um, you can do your fingerprints here on Wednesday evening. Or um, I have a video online that tells you how to get your fingerprints done elsewhere, like the UPS store. One week after your fingerprints and background have been completed, we ask that you contact Prometric. They hate that you contact them. Yes, there is a way for you to check your application um, online. But here's my issue. We all have kids. Some of us have grandkids. We're going to school when they give you a test date and you don't call back to say, hey, I can't make that test date. Let me switch to something else. You're saying you can't attend. So I want you to call them, call them sooner rather than later so that you would have more control over your test date and you can change it. It costs twenty five dollars to change your test date. But I'd rather change it than miss work for a full day because that's what I need to do. Okay. Lastly, do not wait for your admission letter to be emailed to you. Pick up the phone and inquire about your exam date so that you can pay to reschedule if necessary. The longer you wait to call, the less control you have over your test date, and you may be charged additional fees. If you miss your exam appointment, all of the fees paid are forfeited. How much was your exam? $155. Do not give them free money. So follow up behind your application. She says facts. All right. <laughs> all right. So page nine, read through at your leisure. Let's turn to page 10. Yes, dear. When was this? This is from like five months ago. So I was at Atkins for um, my meditation class. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me to come there and I was ready. And she was so did you ever call Prometric? So we are we require you to be responsible and you call because we you may have money already sitting there. And so I ran my car like three or three times and they still like everything it didn't go through. I forgot exactly why. Okay. So your homework assignment for tomorrow is for you to call Prometric to find out because they'll hold your money for a year. And so if they already have money held for you. Um, sometimes the, the numbers on the credit card are not clear. I'm not sure if these are paper application or online application, but the only way to know for sure is if you give them a call. Okay, so I'll follow up with you tomorrow. All right, so and then the um, clinical skills um, test, what you're going to um, bring to the exam. First, we're going to show up 30 minutes before your scheduled exam, which we've already pointed out. They're going to email you an admission letter. It's going to say your test time, your test date, and also... Um, 
your test location. For Jacksonville, we have two different test sites, which our video um, will tell you. There's one on the south side, and that one is First Coast CNA. It's on Phillips Highway. And then there's also one over here off of Normandy. It's called Acumen. Neither of those companies' nurses test you. It's Prometrics nurses that test you. I was a former Prometric nurse evaluator. So I know more details about the test than others, unless they've watched my videos and just been studying me, which is okay. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the identification required. You have to go with two unexpired forms of ID. Is there anybody who does not have two pieces of ID, driver's license, passport? You can even take your banking card. Doesn't have to have any money on the card. We know the bank went through a process before they gave you that card. It just cannot be expired. Okay. Is there anyone here with four names? Like two middle names. Okay. One middle name and two last names. So all right. So total type name, but my license, my bank card, and my social all match. Okay, perfect, perfect. You've been watching the videos. Yes, let's let's keep it all. You know, Social Security is so nice. They forgot to tell me that when you add that stupid dash in between your two last names, that just ruins your whole life. See, everything in life is like my license number is by my previous married name, Mm -hmm. not my now married name. So instead of changing that little letter and the first three numbers on the license, no, it all stayed the same, which is great in theory, but mm-hmm. I tried to give somebody your last name and they're like, that's not you. Oh, I'm wow. Like, oh, that is, I'm for real. And yeah, I learned the hard way that I have to use both names for anything legal. Okay. Hotels, well, I can use my married last name. That's easy. But everything else in life, I have to remember to do it correctly or they kick me out. Okay, we don't, we do not want you getting kicked out for the so, test. So, so like, yes. When I pull out my paperwork here, I was like, yep. Yeah. Nope, I'm using them both. Yes. Yep. So that's very important. Whatever's on your driver's license, on your government issued ID, that's what has to be in the system when you submit your online application. Everybody, what are you wearing to take your test? It's in the center of page 10. What are we going to wear? What we got on. What we got on. So a lot of us wore medical uniforms. You all look very nice in your medical uniforms. Um, Socks, athletic shoes. And I still want you to bring a mask, even though a mask may not be mandated. Because depending on how the COVID rates fluctuate, they may say masks are required again. And, and like too many people are sick in our area right now. All right, fingernail check. Let me see. I'm so proud of you all. I am so proud. All right, so low earrings when you go to take your test, hair pulled back. Not right now, but nursing school, you'd have to have a sleeve on your arm to cover up your tattoos. Um, Is there anybody who plans on changing their appearance before they seek employment? Because I had a student who did that. What do you mean? Yeah, what do you mean by that? Um, She went from looking like natural with natural nails, and then she got the long fingernails, the red hair, and the long lashes. Um, The some of these companies are not going to be. That's not going to work in their environments. And then she was upset because they wanted her to take it off. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm aware about the like tattoos and having it covered like that, but um. Do you think it will be an issue with employment? Um, no. Nope. I've been employed in any job I've applied No, nope, you're very professional and you have tattoos. And if um, maybe I'm, you, you have a tattoo that's really obvious. So I would rather go in and you not have your hair over your face because yeah. they're like, hey, you're trying to trick me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I never do that. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of just like, you see it, if you dig me afterwards, mm-hmm. they were vibing, it was good. Yeah. Okay. I've worked with doctors who have tattoos, yeah. nurses who have tattoos and gauges. That was what I was really nervous about. I don't mm-hmm. think it was like the studying that bothered me. It was mm-hmm. more like, are they going to accept me in this field? If they don't accept you, whoever it is, that's not a place you want to be right. anywhere. Right. So right. you want, yeah, yeah, you're, you're going to be fine. You have a wonderful personality. And the main thing is that you care about patients and you care about others. And you're going to have somebody who fits the textbook description of what a nurse or a CNA should look like. And they don't have bedside mannerisms. And I don't get that from you. All right. So you're very welcome. All right. So page 10, under what to wear. I'm going to read that first paragraph. Candidates taking a clinical skills test are required to wear flat, non-skid, closed toed shoes. It is recommended that a uniform or scrubs be worn on the day of your testing. Candidates may also either wear or bring a watch with a second hand. However, our students are asked not to wear a watch to avoid possible recontamination during hand washing skills. So everybody have a watch on. And if I went to go wash my hands, I wouldn't I wouldn't pass because my watch is preventing me from washing my wrist. If this watch had a loose band and I raised the watch up and it falls back down once my hands are cleansed, I recontaminate the area. Another thing as far as my CNAs and my future nurses, 
you shouldn't have a digital watch anyway because every five seconds what happens to my screen it goes away so you're trying to take a pulse and every five seconds your screen goes black you need a old-fashioned watch that has the two hands you can be fancy on the weekends <laughs> All right, so page 12, everybody. Anything that I don't read is your responsibility to go back and read. So let's talk about these two different exams we have. So on one day, you take two different tests. This is a long day. Um, so we have the Florida CNA Clinical Skills Examination, and our paragraph reads, the computer will randomly select three skills for you to perform during your clinical skills exam. Additional skills that will be tested will be the use of gloves and proper hand washing procedures. So there's actually five skills all together, three main titles. Like you can get a skill um, title pulse. You have to go in and take someone's pulse. But before you touch them, you have to wash your hands. If you have the skill emptying urinary drainage bag, you have to wash your hands and put on gloves. So they end up testing you on five skills. Um, you will be allotted a minimum of 31 minutes up to a maximum of 41 minutes in order to perform your skill. So please highlight 31 to 41. Because as we progress during the class, you're going to be asking me questions. And what I do, because I'm so nice, is that I don't ever give you the answer. I give you the page number. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So at the completion of your examination, you and your partner will switch roles and they will perform their three skills, five skills total with gloves and hand washing. If a skill involves nudity, the role of the resident will be played by a medical mannequin. So that's when you talk to the big old nursing doll, the full-size nursing doll, and the nurse will answer in response. Any questions on your actual skills? And right, let's talk about the computerized test, the Florida CNA written test. The written test is taken on a computer and consists of 60 multiple choice questions that evaluate your overall knowledge and skills in providing safe and competent care. The test has 50 scored items and 10 unscored items used for statistical analysis, you will have 90 minutes to complete the test. So you have 60 questions, but you won't know which 10 are, which 10 don't have weight, which 10 are just there for future practice purposes versus the 50 that do have weight. We have so many questions online, so many resources, and this new website, that um, the new online course has hundreds of practice questions. So like it has a, a test bank, I'm like, few more days away it's been a long time we even like read the chapters out to you that way because a lot of people don't read you just want to walk around the house and press play i got you um but it's just taking longer than i anticipated to complete that class and that's what's going to you're going to be transitioned from our google resource site to our online site um and that way you can practice more questions like you should be practicing questions they won't be on a piece of paper the audio test the written test can be taken in an audio format during an audio test, you will be able to hear the questions read to you while reading and answering the questions on a computer. You may replay questions as many times as needed. The audio administration may be helpful for candidates who have a reading disability, limited reading skills, or those who consider English their second language. Candidates who would like to take the audio test should select this option on the application form. They don't charge you more. So when you're on the Prometric application, when you're on the website completing your online application, it's going to give you an option to have um, clinical skills and written tests or clinical skills and oral or audio tests. If you want the test read to you, you get the audio test. Yes, ma'am. Um, if I get the skills once they give you time to go over No, ma'am. You get to practice all that at home. It's like... It's showtime. And you've been practicing, you've been watching my videos, just channel people like tell me. When I took my test, I heard you in my head the whole time. So you'll do fine. Whatever your test experience was last time, we're 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 more mature, we're wiser, and you're gonna do better. Okay. All right, so advice to help you pass the written examination. Take the written exam seriously and study for the written exam as well as the clinical test. A lot of you all do not like to read. This new generation does not read. Practice exam questions nightly and look up any unfamiliar medical terms. So when you're asking me stuff in class, yes, I know the answer, but you don't know the answer. So I make you look it up. I'm preparing you. I'm tricking you. I'm tricking you, front table. You're not in the CNA class. You're in the pre-nursing class. I know, right? Sucks. Because <laughs> when you're in nursing school, that one nursing instructor has 50 students. And so she has this huge textbook. 
she's just covering material. She's teaching you the foundation. She's teaching you concepts, but you have to actually pull it in and learn it. Okay? Do not change your answers. Always select the option that will be the safest for you and those in your care. This is hard for those who have care experience. So whenever um, you're in the room and you're saying, hey, I know how to do this, I tell you to throw away what you already know. Because if you answer the questions based on what you already know, it's going to be wrong because you did it the fastest way, not the safest way. The safest way when you're answering a test question probably has multiple steps. And you're looking at it like, man, I'd never get my day done if I did all that. <laughs> Remember, your test is based on the safest one patient you have all the time that you need. It's not based on you working in the hospital with 15 to 20 patients. Avoid words with answers such as always and never. Healthcare is individualized and we rarely take a one size fits all approach to patient care. So if a question has an answer option with the word always or with the word never, it's probably not the answer. Okay. Yes, those are yours to write in. Know the role of the nursing assistant. You are not the nurse. Notify the nurse in case of an emergency or if there are changes in your patient's condition. So you all, how many patients do you think that a CNA in the nursing home has on night shift? 20 plus. Um, you, you're at one of the fancy ones. She said 12. I yeah. <laughs> so so that's if they sleep. Some of the older people don't sleep. Yeah. So let's say that you have 20 residents. How many LPNs, licensed practical nurses, do you think would be on the night shift? Right. It was just me. I paid that back. So now it's coming jogging your memory. So by law, they at least need to have one nurse. But if you have 30 patients with one nurse who may have 30 patients and a patient's on the floor, how do you get help? You cannot leave your resident. How do you get help? Because this one says, know the role of the nursing assistant. You are not the nurse. Notify the nurse in case of an emergency or if there are changes in your patient's condition. Ms. Lucas is on the floor. What do you do? How do, how do you get help? So if it's the call button, that's the slow way to get help. You can holler or usually there's like a panic button or in the bathroom, there's an emergency cord. So if you do the call bell, it's routed to, so hopefully if there's someone at the front station, they say, how can I help you? But there could be five people in line. And she's mm -hmm. trying to get through all of them. When you pull the panic button, that's going to alert more people. It's going to alert the entire floor. And I heard you all say, well, you yell for help. What do you yell? Patient down. Patient on the floor. <laughs> help. help. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so so that's what I wanted to hear. You all do not yell, nurse. Because so so everybody just scream help. Just seems like man down. And she's like, oh, and she comes around it. I'm like, so if you scream help, there's a lab tech. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, there doesn't have to be a nurse who initially helps you go find that nurse. I need you to stay with that resident, to make sure they don't go into cardiac arrest. So you're talking to them. You're not trying to get them up off the floor. You're comforting them. Maybe you're elevating that extremity until the nurse actually gets there. But what you're not going to do is by yourself try to pick this person up off the floor. Now when the nurse comes and we have the lab tech and we have the physical therapist because all these people now just showed up because you screamed help great job they're here now what do you do as a cna we get them back to the bed and what's your job document. comfort document how do we prevent any other medical conditions from happening or medical concerns i need numbers what do you all have to do? Vital, Vital signs. So when you said document, it's like immediately we get this person in the bed. I need to see you getting the blood pressure cuff, the pulse oximetry, counting the respirations. Comfort is wonderful, but comfort doesn't take priority over making sure this person is stable. Because if an older person fell when they were walking, what could have happened to them? Exactly. Blood pressure's low. And so you are helping me. You're getting the vital signs. I'm doing my assessment. 
I tell you what I need. You go out and you get it. No one's leaving this resident. And then when you come back and I have the bandages and everything else, now I go out and I call the doctor. And you know what? The first thing the doctor's going to ask me, what's the blood pressure? He ain't got to ask me that. I'm like pulling it out. Hey, the blood pressure was this. What do you document? Did, you, did the person fall or were they found on the floor? The incident and how you found them. If you say that they fail, the lawyer is probably going to be like, well, why didn't you stop it? Where, when, how? <laughs> so they were found on the floor because if you physically see a patient falling, you're supposed to help prevent that fall. Okay. Great job, team. Next one, learn how to prioritize care. We're still on page 13. Taking a resident's vital signs may be more of a priority than giving someone a bath or keeping them comfortable during an emergency situation. Example, a recent fall. Take the vital signs first, and once the resident is stable, then you can give them a bath. Don't forget to do what? Document. document. If you do not document your findings, you have no proof to support the care that you provided. And now I need you to develop a study plan. You're going to practice a few skills and refute a, a review a few questions daily. And some of you all tell me, well, I don't have anyone to practice with. Y'all can practice with each other. Give me until Thursday though, to find out who the crazy ones are. And I'll be like, uh -uh, don't practice with her because <laughs> I don't want anyone who's going to be a distraction. I want somebody who's going to be positive and motivating that you feel comfortable practicing with so you can pass this test. If you have kids, utilize those little boogers, those little rugrats. Utilize them because they think it's fun. They don't even know they're helping you pass your test. Okay. My with me. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you have test and anxiety, research videos on how to reduce test and anxiety and how to improve focus and confidence. So before I go, I do public speaking every now and then because I'm really busy. But before I go and I do a speech anywhere, I record myself saying the speech. And because I've recorded it on my way to wherever I'm going, I don't listen to the radio. Guess what? I listen to the whole way there. I listen to my recording over and over again. So by the time I get there, I already got it. And so for the skills that you have to do, it's the same skills. You got 21 skills. Hello, my name is Margaret. I'm your CNA today. I'm here to give you a bath. Is that okay? If you go into the room confident, you are going to um, make the nurse more comfortable. But if you go into the room really timid and shy, the nurse is going to have that clipboard there. Oh, she gonna start She's going. <laughs> <laughs> so don't give the nurse any ammunition. Practice. Practice with your family members and your friends. And if you don't have anybody, just have your camera up and practice with your camera. Okay. All right. And then don't forget to wash your hands before and after providing care for you. Don't turn the page. Do not turn the page. If my CNAs fail the exam. They fail because of hand washing. I need y'all to highlight this. I've been doing this for 15 years, training CNAs, and you all can remember to do everything yourself or wash your hands. So I do have a question about washing hands. Yes, ma'am. What about rings? And I have a bracelet. So um, your bracelet for your test, don't even wear it. Your ring, maybe only wear if that's your wedding ring, maybe only wear the band for your test and not the ring, because not just with the hand washing, but with the gloves the stone yeah. is going to be an issue I just put mine. in your pocket I was like, there. For the test, yep. just, just for the, the test and then you you know your hubby can get you another ring for work or you can get the the rubber ring okay she's like no i like my ring okay so I if you all stone out of mine a few months ago at work yeah i just got mine so. yeah you want to be really careful with the gloves it'll it'll loosen your stone yeah or you can just get the rubber ring the silicone ring that everyone else wears to work you don't get any poop in it. All right, everybody, page 14 and 15. <laughs> I'm not wrong. Not they do. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've helped a few nurses try to track their rings down because they came off when they took off the gloves. So it's not cool. Everybody, page 15, I need you to highlight HCC. And what does HCC stand for? Hand washing, Hand -washing curtain, and call curtain and call bell. So when you enter the room, you greet the resident and I need your focus to change. I need it to be on HCC. So you're going to see a skills card in a few moments and it's going to have your skills on them. So what happens is we get so focused on the skill that we forget the process. It is, hello, my name is Eunice. I'm your CNA today. I'm here to take your pulse. Is that okay? Before I begin, let me go wash my 
hands. Once my hands are clean, I can touch everything else in that room. And someone's like, well, Eunice, you washed your hands and then you contaminated your hands by providing privacy and closing the curtain. Let me explain to you why I wash my hands first. This is the hall. This is where I came from. I've been out here touching everything. Now I come into your room and I start touching everything. No, yes, I'm bringing outside contaminants into your room. So before I touch anything within your room, I always start off by washing my hands. In the real world, we have hand sanitizer. At the test site, there is no hand sanitizer. You have to physically wash your hands for each skill. OK, if the nurse decides to give you a little break and she may say, I consider your hands clean, you still have to tell her that you'd be washing your hands. But it's not an automatic that she's going to be like, hey, you wash your hands for the first skill. You don't have to wash them for the second and third. It just depends on the nurse. And I need you to pass your test. So anytime you start a skill, you wash your hands. And anytime you end a skill, you wash your hands again. All right. So at the beginning of each skill, we are also going to provide privacy by pulling the curtain. And if I'm in the bed holding a handheld device, if you have to perform a skill on me, I don't need to be holding a handheld device while you're performing the skill. I hold that call button when you're not in the room because that's how I get help. But once you're in the room, you can remove that. And we'll go through this once we're in the actual clinical room. So hello, my name is Eunice. I'm your CNA today. I'm here to take your pulse. Is that okay? Before I begin, let me wash my hands. No one at the test site can refuse. If they refuse to allow you to perform the skill, the nurse fails them. Everyone must say yes. Okay. After the hands are clean, whatever's nearest you, the curtain or the call bell, remove it. And then we perform our skill. Talking to you about processes, not teaching you skills right now. On page 14, can I have a volunteer to read one through eight practice steps? <clears throat> Perfect. And right now we're just talking through it. We'll be doing it in real time a little bit later today. Thank you for reading. Everybody turn to page 16. You're almost ready for your first break. We got a few more pages. So as you're performing your skills, if they have enough staff, there are supposed to be two nurses who are evaluating you. So the two nurses, and that's if they have enough staff, because lately in our areas, there's only been one nurse who's been evaluating you. One nurse will sit independently and watch you as you perform your skill. The next nurse follows you everywhere you go. Both nurses have a clipboard. Put my brown face on top of their bodies. If you can do the skill in front of me, you're going to do fine doing the skill in front of these nurses. They are checking to see, number one, standard precautions and infection control measures. Did you wash your hands? Are your legs touching the bed whenever you're near the bed? If your legs are touching the bed, um, one of my... Um, I don't know her personally, but one of my Facebook friends just um, stated that she has terminal cancer and she only has a few weeks left, left to live. So if I am the one providing care for her or to her, and I just was in a patient's room that, that has an undiagnosed case of COVID, and I'm in there touching the bed, I'm doing everything, and now I go into her room and she has terminal cancer and my legs touch her bed, what did I just do? Well, I'm just supposed to have to undiagnosed oh okay. yeah because they're just in their coffin now we don't have the it's cross-contamination yeah. so you're going to see that a lot we sometimes don't find out what people have right. not right away right. yes and we just can't automatically put everybody on isolation because they're coughing <laughs> everybody we want isolation so um you want to make sure that you are doing everything in your power to protect you but to also protect people who have weakened immune systems because what you do with your uniform, uh, your body may be able to fight the germs. The other person's body can't. So you don't want to be touching the beds. Your nurse is going to be looking at that. When you're in our clinical room, if you touch the bed, you're going to get upset with me. I'm like, oh, you got to start all over again. 
when you're picking up pillows, the pillow touches you, you got to start all over again. When you're unfolding towels because you all move fast and a towel hits you, I'll turn down it. No, it's fine. I, I don't want you having to, everybody's going to freeze if you're having a personal summer. <laughs> she, she's cold. Huh? <laughs> we, we have sheets for you you can wrap up in the sheet it's fine all right she's having a personal summer over here all right we're almost done <laughs> all right so infection control measures and also standard precautions make sure you wash your hands um, promoting a resident comfort you even if the person is unable to respond to you think about the person who's in a coma how would you know if that person is experiencing pain Perfect, perfect. Grimacing. If they have a heart monitor, what might you see on the monitor? It's going to raise up when you turn them. So that is a sign, nonverbal cues, that this person is having some type of issue that could be a response to pain. So even if a person can't verbalize it, when you're performing skills on the mannequins, you still have to be asking whether or not they're in pain. And at the test site, who will respond for you? The nurse, perfect. Promote residents' rights. Can you do what you want to these people when you want? Yeah. No, they have a right to refuse. They also have a right to participate in their care. So you're going to be asking them questions such as, you know, do you want to eat this or do you want to eat that? And then lastly, promoting resident safety. We've already covered it. We're going to go to the very last two sentences, which state, never leave a resident who is at risk of injury alone. You're going to stay with the resident and call for help while you are with the resident. And then we're on page 17 at the bottom. We talked about HCC. What does HCCD stand for? Documentation. If you don't document it, you have no proof that it was done. So imagine you being a great CNA that you are and you did everybody's weight this morning because that's what we do before we go home. And I say, hey, what's the weight on Mr. Jenkins in room 342? And you're like, I don't know. You got to go back and do it all over again. Mm -hmm. So documentation is important. And so can I get someone else to read the exiting procedures um, one through six on page 17? After you have performed the skill, you must leave the area clean and tidy, neatness counts. Place the call bell in the resident's hands and ask if there is anything else that is needed. Open the privacy curtain, discard gloves if applicable, and then wash your hands. Document your findings and the care provided if you have not done so. Perform a five second scan of the room, ensuring that all procedures have been done and that the patient's right to safety, comfort, and privacy has been maintained before you exit. Perfect. So, everybody, we're going to be taking us a quick break, five to 10 minutes. And um, that way you can cool down. You can go warm up. You can't go home. I'll give you a sheet. <laughs> I'm glad you stopped that because I love